So at this point, we've created a WPF application that uploads into blob storage pictures, images, files, whatever we want to create. We also created a catalog of uploads, which are uh, stored in table storage and using the queue system to allow us to pass off some work. So now we need to have something that's going to go out and actually create those thumbnails for us. And since it's stored in the, in the cloud, what better place to do that than in the cloud with a worker process? A worker process is ideally suited for the worker role because it allows us to upload into the Azure Compute a process that will run and monitor the queue to create the thumbnails. So it'll read the queue messages with the work, and then it'll go out, process the thumbnails, and then up the Windows Azure table with the new value for the thumbnail URI. And then in between processing messages, it'll go through and sleep for a predetermined amount of time. So let's get started. So the first thing I want to say is that I'm going to use the compute emulator to run our process locally before we deploy it to the cloud. In order to do that, I need to actually run our Visual Studio in an administrative mode. So I'm going to go ahead and close it down. And then I'm going to start this up again. But I'm going to use the Control Shift and then click on Visual Studio. And that then opens it up in administrative mode. The reason why is that when you're working with the compute emulator, you need to be able to get into and talk across the process boundaries with the actual process that's running the emulator. So in our solution, I'm going to go out and I'm going to add a cloud solution to our project. Let's go down Add, New Project, and I'm going to say here's my cloud, and we're going to add a Windows Azure cloud service. I'm going to call this my Thumb Maker Cloud, and it's going to allow me to add different kinds of worker roles and web roles to it. Now you've got a lot of choices as to how you want to do this. So I've got VB, C Sharp, F Sharp, lots of choices on how you're going to do this. And also, even within the given process, you have web roles, you have worker roles, WCF worker roles, cache worker roles. I'm just going to create just a standard worker role, and we'll call this our thumb maker. And we're going to go ahead and say OK. And this will actually add two projects to our solution. One of the projects is going to be our Thumbmaker Cloud. And this is where we're going to have settings. So if I double click on the properties about this, this will show how I'm going to run this inside of the cloud. I've got currently set up to run a small VM size. I can make it larger. I've got some settings. This is where we're going to add settings. Like for instance, I've got a connection string. So for instance, I've got an setting in here called my storage account. This is going to be a connection string. And if I come over here, I'm just going to click on the dot, dot, dot and tell it to use the storage emulator for now. And then I'm going to add another setting, which is going to be our queue name. And this is just a simple string. I'm going to call this create thumbnail. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here into my Thumbmaker project itself. You'll see in the worker role, I've got three methods defined for me by default. I've got a run method, which is going to have a worker iteration loop that will run through and consistently go through and do whatever we tell it to do. I'm going to also have an on start. The on start is where we're going to start out and we're going to do initializing the storage and then set up the other properties we need to make things work. So let's go in here. We'll add a method. The same way we added initialize storage in the other project, we're going to just control period and stub this out. It'll generate a method stub for us. And then I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to add the logic that will go out and read that storage. So I've got some globals we'll use. Might as well put them right here. You'll see I've got my blob client, my account, my queue client my queue and the queue name. And then I've got the methods that's going to go through and initialize the storage. So again, I'm going out to the Configuration Settings Publisher to pull in from the settings where my current storage is. Um, I'm going to set up my storage account to come from the cloud storage account. And we'll create a blob client. We don't have to create anything on the table because we're just working off the queue. Um, so I've got the queue name that I'm going to be reading in. And then we go out and we set up our queue client and our queue reference name. Now I do want to have a method that when I go out and I process working with these files, these 
queue messages, I want to iterate through and create thumbnails. So let's do, first of all, this loop where we've got the while true. I'm just going to replace this with my while loop. And you'll see that I've got my queue message, I've got get message, I've got the message. If it's not equal to null, then I'm going to pull out the message off of the queue. I'm going to split it with the commas. Remember, we did comma separated values. So the first part is going to be the image URI, the second part is going to be the partition key, and the third one is going to be the row key. Next, we're going to process through the name for the thumb URI and get rid of the slashes and do a regular expression against it. Then we're going to come down, pull up the container, and create a couple of references. One is going to be my image URI. The other is going to be the thumbnail, where we're going to write out our blob to storage. Then I'm going to come down. I'm going to call a, a method called process image. We'll implement that here in a second. So if I do a control period, that will add a stub out for that method. And then I'm going to go out and I'm going to commit the output blob, set the content type is equal to an image, set properties, and then update the data source. Now update the data source, I do have to add a reference. So let's go into our references here. And I'm going to add a reference to our data upload library. And while I'm in here, I'm also going to add in a assembly for drawing because what we want to do is create a thumbnail. And in order to do that, you need the namespace for the drawing. So that is what's going to happen inside of our process images. So let's go ahead and add the data upload library reference. And do the same thing here. And then we're going to come down, we're going to replace this process image with one that actually generates the thumbnails that we want. So I'm going to go into the toolbox and I've got this code here. Now what I'm doing inside of my code is I've got a process image which is pulling in a stream input from the system I.O. I've got a uh, background color. I'm going to put a branding message called bencotips.com onto my images. I've got a thumbnail size I'm arbitrarily setting to be 173 pixels in size. And what we're going to do is we're going to go out and we're going to create a new bitmap that is going to read in from the original image using system.drawing. And then we're going to create an output image that's going to scale our image down. So we're basically going through and saying, OK, if the image is taller or shorter, we're going to take the width is equal to the thumb size. And then we're setting the height to be proportional. So we're saving the, uh, the calculation on that. And then we create a new bitmap with that height and width. Now, on top of that bitmap, we're going to do a couple of things. One is I'm going to use the system drawing to draw out the original image onto there. And I'm setting up some smoothing modes, some pixel offsets, some interpolation. And then on top of the message, I'm going to call another method called draw string, which will add my brand, my text, on top of the message that gets created. And then it's going to save this out as a JPEG. Now, what I'm going to do is let's go up here, and we're going to put a break on here. And I'm going to save this. And now, because the cloud project is my current startup project, when I run this, it'll run it inside of the Azure emulator. So we can click on Run. And what it'll do is it's going to go out, it's going to spin up the Windows Azure emulator. I can see that running over here. So if I go out and I say Show the Compute Emulator UI, this will show me, here's my Thumbmaker Cloud. Here's the instance that's up and running. I can see all the messages as to how things are processing. Um, this will periodically update with new messages as they come through. So the Thumbmaker entry point is running. And now I can see I've got a message. So if I take that message and look at it, um, I can see there's my original uh, blob name, et cetera. So let's go to an F10. And what I'll find is that my image URI is passed in to be that blob that's running in my local storage. My partition key is blob. And my row key is equal to that current date with a GUID attached to it. So it's a guaranteed unique value. Next, we're going to go through and create the thumb URI that's going to be the output, which is going to be the same as the original, but have a dash thumb at the end. And then we're going to go out and create the container, step through, and then we're going to go ahead and process the image, call the commit, and then set the properties. And then when that's done, 
we'll go ahead and delete the message and then go through and get the next message. So basically what's going to happen now is if we take a look at our storage and we execute this, now our queue is now empty. So if we were to let this thing just run, and then let's go out and run our process again. So this is up and going. Go out and start this again. So here's our images, and I'm going to go over and grab some pictures, and let's just grab several of these and drag them into our space. Now you see I've uploaded that many images, and as these are sitting here in our logic, if I refresh this, we're going to find that every one of them has now got a thumb created for it, and our, our queue was emptied very quickly. So that is how we can create a worker role and put it out into the cloud. The next step would be to actually publish this all into the cloud and replace our storage settings with the actual cloud settings. So to do that, we need to go out and log into our Azure portal. So go out to windowsazure.com and then click on the portal. And assuming you've got a login for your account, what we can do is make sure that we've got a storage account set up here and a service that we want to deploy to. So I've got my app dev demo where I've got an instance up and running and we're going to use that. I've got a storage account called app dev data. Let's go into the storage and I can take this and I can pull up the, the keys for this and copy those. And then what we're going to do is go back into our project. In our WPF uploader app config file, You'll see that I've got my Azure storage is currently using the development storage. Now I'm going to change it to be my app dev demo. And with that app dev demo, I'm going to pull in the account key. Make sure I pulled in the right one. App dev data. And then I'm going to paste in the account key. And then I'm going to go over here and I'm going to do comment out this line, control KC does a comment, and then uncomment the other one, control KU uncomments that. And so now when this is going to run, it's now going to actually, the WPF application will store it into cloud storage. And to make that work inside of the Thumbmaker cloud, we just need to go over here and pull in the storage account here. And I'm going to use my subscription which is then going to go out and it's going to pull up my app dev data and it will pull in the key for me. And if we take this and we want to deploy it into the cloud itself, all we need to do is right click on this and say publish. Publish says where are we going to publish it to. I'm going to use my three month free trial. Click on next. It's got my app dev demo. I'm going to put this into the staging environment. I'm going to enable remote desktop if I want. We'll put in an account. put in a secret password, say OK, that way I can remote desktop into it, click on Next and Publish, and what will happen is now Windows Azure is going to take our application, push it into the cloud, and now everything would work completely from the cloud, and I can then go out and explore it and see all of that data and all of that information. So as we saw, we can create a blob client to upload images into blob storage, we added a data upload library, a class library, to contain the logic for how we want to do those uploads. And we're sharing that across the Thumbmaker project and the WPF uploader project. And then we added a worker role into a cloud project to actually do the processing and create those thumbs.